morning. Well, at least it's it's morning for us. I don't know <laughs> what time it is for you wherever in the world you are. Today we're talking about living this lifestyle and some of the, what, the... The struggles, the realities. Yeah. We've been traveling with my mom now for several months, on and off, and we have seen her struggles firsthand. A little more. Okay, stop. That's good. And it's like a trip down memory lane, all of our first issues, everything. Everything that goes along with, with owning a van or an RV. Uh, and or a tiny house yeah. or a boat. I think it's just the realities of living a completely different lifestyle and one that is mobile. So that's what we're going over today to, with my mom. Yeah. As we hike, because <laughs> that's what you do. You get out and you enjoy nature, which is kind of the point of having a traveling home. I think the first thing that is hard to accept is time. Like everything's gonna take way longer, way longer than you ever imagined. And people told us that when we moved into an RV, people told us that when we moved into a sailboat, and we told you that yes. <laughs> when you were buying a, you're looking for your van. I think that's probably one of the hardest hurdles to get over in the beginning. I agree. I invest a lot of time trying to find the van or the RV that I wanted to settle into. Then I went out with my girlfriends and we started looking. We looked at vans and we went to RV shows, shows. and dealers. Yeah, and uh, researched them on the internet. Mm -hmm. and yeah, so that's kind of where I started. And in reality, probably for about a year is really when I started deciding that it was time for me to jump on in and really get serious because I wanted to have my van by spring. Okay, boom, you bought the van. You're ready to go and you're thinking, first trip, Alaska, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I do understand now why you told me I couldn't do that. So, totally get it now. It's like a reality yeah. check. There's so many things to learn. Everything will take way more time than you ever expect. So, don't buy the RV and assume you're going to hit 50 national parks in your first year. You'll be lucky to hit a couple and uh, not spend your entire <laughs> year in service. This is a completely different lifestyle and there are so many things that go with into changing your lifestyle but I think the biggest one is downsizing because it's the very first thing you do and whether you're in a van an RV a tiny house or a boat whatever I mean it's a vessel right it's this thing that moves you from one place to another um, and it's your new dwelling and whatever size you go for whatever vessel you choose it could be a lot smaller and so you've got all this artwork you've got furniture you've got clothing you've got all this stuff that may not fit within this new lifestyle and I think that downsizing process is incredibly difficult difficult <laughs> very yes. difficult yeah yes and I didn't really even have a whole lot of stuff, but I have way more stuff than I even know what to do with. Yes, that is going to be a process, figuring out, do you sell it? Do you keep it? Do you put it in storage? Are, is this forever? Is this just a short time period in your life? Those are all very personal details to deal with and very individual, but um, it's a real thing. And so it won't necessarily be easy. No, it's very difficult in fact. So be prepared. Managing resources, that's been pretty difficult. Um, you never think about your water, your electricity, what happens when you flush the toilet. Um, those are just things you don't think about when you're in a home or an apartment because they're just natural. You go in and you flip a switch and everything works. Well, it doesn't <laughs> quite work that way in an RV and learning how to manage each of those parts of the RV has been a little difficult. So it takes a little bit of time and really putting your brain on and thinking about what you need to do each time so that you don't run out of water or you don't lose your battery power, which has all happened to me. So, and you don't overfill your black tank. Yeah, that would be really bad. And it's not just managing your resources, but now you have to learn how to manage your vessel, whether it's the size of it, how to drive it. You might spin out just a little bit here. Just keep it steady. There you go, good job. How to maneuver it, watching out for trees and rocks, <laughs> objects <laughs> that, yeah, that maybe you didn't have to worry about when you were driving a car. So it's very different. You need time to get used to all of that um, so that you aren't bashing into rocks and scraping the side <laughs> of your rig up with trees and awnings and all of that kind of stuff um, or running into docks when you're in a boat like we do. No, I've never actually done that. And of course, learning. Learning is just, it's a lot of learning because it is a totally different 
lifestyle. And whether that is reading manuals and you learn well by doing that just by reading or blogs, maybe you need to watch videos, maybe you need to sign up for a class or a course to you know better understand all of these things, um, or just simply getting out and doing because that's the number one way to learn, right? The more you get out and do it, faster you will learn, the more you get used to everything. So it's a lot of learning. Don't get overwhelmed. You can get it. Maintenance. Maintenance and service is going to be a lifelong problem no matter what vessel you end up buying. And trust me, it's incredibly frustrating. You buy this brand new thing and you think, I'm just gonna go on this adventure. No, no, no. They gotta take it into service. They gotta work on it. And then you get it back and you're all excited. I'm gonna go on this big adventure. No, 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 no. 10 things break in your first week, you gotta take it back. It's just the way it is, unfortunately. More time, <laughs> so much time has been spent on maintenance. Taking things in, getting things fixed, and they don't even fix them. Some things I've had fixed three times, and then Jason had to come in and fix it for real. Oh yeah, it, it is frustrating. It's, it's even frustrating for us in the boat, in the RV, same thing. I know what my mom's going through. You just think, it's a car. It should be, it should work. Everything should work. And you know, this one guy in the RV told me, well, I bought a Ferrari. You know, I'm like, no, you bought a trailer house on wheels. You didn't buy a Ferrari. Does your Ferrari have a refrigerator and a toilet and a, a you know, and an air conditioning unit? Well, I guess it has air conditioning. <laughs> it does. But, you know, I thought I was going to get a loaner vehicle, but I didn't. I had to stay in a hotel or with a friend, so that doesn't even work. And then they don't even clean it when you get it back. So I was kind of disappointed in that. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was going to be different. It's, it's a lot of maintenance. It's not like taking your car in for service yeah. at all. Yeah. I know know that now. Time wise, quality wise, and work wise, it will not be anything like a car. Yeah, you got to be prepared. You really yeah. do because that takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, and that's probably has been the most frustrating thing for me. The shakedown. You need time for a shakedown trip. Do not take off immediately. Lots of it. <laughs> yes. We always tell people three to six months. Trust me, it sounds like a lot, but you wanna be with your support system in an area that you know where you have a service center, a friend, a grocery store, a laundromat. It's your comfort zone. You yeah. know where all of those things are. You have people you can reach out to to help you, hopefully. Stay within your comfort zone. You need time to acclimate to this new lifestyle. And yeah, short trips, little short trips. Not too far away. Yeah. yeah. In case you yeah. break down. <laughs> yeah. Shorter toe distance. <laughs> Keep it close. I mean, stay with your friends. You need support. And trust me, you will 100% appreciate the fact that you have friends to tell all of your horror stories of all the things that have happened to you in the first few months. Yes. Yes. And despite whether your friends get what you're doing or not, and with your friends, wow. family, yeah, whatever. <laughs> we they... need somebody to listen to. Yeah, exactly. But it's got to be totally worth it. We yes. have been doing this for almost 10 years now, living a mobile lifestyle, and we wouldn't keep on doing it if we didn't think that it was a worthy lifestyle and we didn't love it. But it does come with its frustrations, and that's what this is about, is hopefully preparing you for that a little bit better. Yeah, right. and for me, I guess when we bought the boat and we sailed somewhere, like the first island we got to, and we dove in and we snorkeled, I thought, that's amazing. And like, Mom, you told us your first story yeah. of when you fell yes. in love. Like, what was that? I was uh, on the top of a mountain going to yeah. New Mexico, and I opened my van. There was snow everywhere, and I had my first lunch on my stove. It was awesome. <laughs> I'm hooked. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's... Those little moments kind of suck you in and remind you why you're doing all of this, but it is a lifestyle. So it's not a vacation and it's gonna take a lot of time. So give yourself that time. Don't rush it, expect frustrations, yes. expect a huge learning curve. And uh, yeah, it won't make it any easier, but at least you can't say that nobody told you. Yes, You're we did. Welcome. <laughs> welcome. That's it for us today. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.